We continue, this is our last Sunday with James Harnish and a disciple's heart and talking about the ways that um, we live our lives to reflect Christ in our everyday, right? The way that we do life so that we don't have to step forward and say, hey, I'm a Christian, because people just know it by the way we live, by the way that we uh, do our best to reflect Christ's love and God's will into this world. Now, um, our scriptures told us that, that there are treasures, right? That we each have treasures. But like I talked to the kids, I want you to understand that treasure does not mean just money. We hold so many treasures within us that God has given us. Maybe it's a skill. Maybe it's a gift. Maybe it's something that we hone because we just like to do it. God has put upon our hearts that that is something that we enjoy. And so we work for it, right? We try harder. But each of us has a gift. And here are some things that Harnish says, according to Scripture, that are things that we as disciples strive for. We are all united in the one, some people would say foremost, mission. I would, I would challenge and, and Harnish would challenge us to believe it is the one mission of the church. And what is that? Make disciples, right? We are called to love each other and to make disciples. And not only to make them, but to mature them, to love them, to carry on relationship with them because we are not a one and done each of us is intricate to the other and we'll talk more about that as we go and we're going to do some fun stuff next week at our fifth sunday that shows us um, with a few visuals what it means when we aren't using the gifts that god has given us or when we don't allow others so each one has a gift each one has a gift that God has placed within them. Sometimes we look at folks and go, oh man, I wish I could do that, right? Sometimes we do it at the detriment of leaving behind the gift that God gave us because we have that want of what God gave others, right? Instead of just dwelling on the joy and the wonder of what God gave us and working on sharing that with our world each gift we have number three each gift we have makes a difference if it didn't make a difference god wouldn't place it in front of us right each gift we have makes a difference and in the last couple weeks we have this scripture where we talk about you know somebody was you know maybe it's a prophet or maybe it's somebody that's going to teach or maybe it's somebody that's going to preach but we all have a gift to share and each one makes a difference in the big picture in that big puzzle where we need all the pieces to fit together for the picture to be complete right i love looking at the front of the puzzle in the store and thinking oh that's just beautiful and then you get it home and how long i mean i love puzzles but i am not good at them so how many months does it sit on the card table in the basement in the corner because, I, you know, I've got those pieces that I just can't make fit, so all the rest of them do. Or you can't find that one piece, right? And until you find the one piece that's going to let you see the rest of the picture where everything else goes, it's kind of hard to see what the picture will look like when it's complete. Number four, each gift is given for the common good. So there's a reason we are each given the gift, and it's not just to enhance ourselves. But it is to be a gift for the common good, for each other. The love of each other, the care of each other, the wonder, W-O-N, the wonder of each other. Have you ever looked at someone and just been amazed? It's not because they didn't work hard but it's because they felt the gift that god gave them and they said i want to be the best i can be with this gift that god gave me and and you know what maybe it's being a runner 
or maybe it's being a volleyball player, or maybe it means that we're uh, buying blankets, or maybe it means that we're teaching, or maybe it means that we're praying. All those things, all those things are for the common good. So that means what we do in the name of Christ should all be for the common good. And number five, as we discover and use our gifts, we become co-workers with God, who who's wants to, right? He wants to transform the world. Take a deep breath, because that's a big thing. We think about transforming the world, and it becomes overwhelming, right? How can I impact the world? Well, what if we started right here, right now, in this place where we are? And we've all seen the little, you know, drop the pebble in the still lake and what happens, all the circles. And it's a beautiful picture, but it's real, folks. When we drop kindness, when we drop love, when we drop care, when we drop understanding, it makes a ripple effect. What happens when we drop um, anger and disgust and makes a ripple effect, right? If I'm claiming to follow Christ, what I want to do is let that pebble be a reflection of Christ. So how do we work together to help God transform the world? We start right here with those little pebbles, and we let them continue to grow, and we help others who might, just like all our gifts fit together, there are some people that might not be meant to sit right here and drop those pebbles. They might be meant to be one of the rings that takes that love and joy and care to the world, right? But we have to not stop dropping the pebbles. Now, part of that, so, so it's always not about screaming loudly, right? It's not always about standing on our soapbox on the corner, um, standing on the corner of Main Street, you know, proclaiming to the world, I love Jesus, at the top of our lungs with a bullhorn, right? You're going to gather some attention, but I'm not sure it's the attention you necessarily want, right? Evangelism has gotten a bad rap over the years, right? That they're pushy people, and they just, you know, they get in your face, and they don't, that's evangelists. Evangelism, evangel is good news, good news. How do we give the good news? And some of that is through the way we speak. So our message today is like, speak, speak softly, and carry a bullhorn, right? But I want that bullhorn, I want you to think about it in this way, that that bullhorn is not us standing on the corner proclaiming in our bullhorn. Instead, we have bullhorn lives. How are we proclaiming so loudly in the way we live our lives that anybody can look at us and not say, my goodness, I want what she's got. I want what he's got. I want to love Jesus that much. I want to see the love of Christ in other people's eyes because I am living that life. How do we do that? We begin with, re with friendship. How, <laughs> you hear me say all the time, a lot of times, um, and you probably are rolling your eyes in the back of your head even though you're smiling at me, relationship is everything, right? It's about relationship. If we haven't made relationship with folks, what did Jesus do before he proclaimed to people? He sat down and ate with them, right? He sat down with the sinners and the tax collectors and the children and his apostles. And he sat down with them. He learned about mom and dad and the kids. He learned about that sister that just drove them all crazy. He learned about the troubles of fishing. He learned about how... Sometimes the government asked their employees to do things that they didn't like to do, like gather taxes, and he changed their lives, right? He didn't just sit down and say, hey, you need to believe in me. He built a relationship. And then as we're building that relationship, we need to listen. 
And I don't just mean listen to the words. If you're truly listening to people, you're listening to their facial expressions, to their body language, to their heart and soul, speaking in each and every word they say and in the words they don't say and in the actions they don't take. So we're building that relationship and we're paying attention. We're not just absently hearing, we are listening. And we have to know our own story, right? If somebody says, well, why do you love Jesus? Because uh, it says so in the Bible. And yeah, but why? So you kind of have to know your own story, right? Think about it. It's not hard. It doesn't have to be hard. It says because when I, when I pray, I can feel Christ respond to my heart with a warming. You know, because when I've prayed and asked for God's will, a path is made clear. We have reasons that we believe. And maybe it's just because, because I feel safe if I'm praying, even if things aren't going my way. Whatever that is, we have to know our story, because when we're in relationship, it's not one-sided. Relationship is two-way. So we have to be willing to be a little bit vulnerable with the folks that are being vulnerable with us. Because as we talked about in our uh, last Sunday, vulnerability is not, is not weakness. Instead, there is strength in vulnerability. And you need to offer the invitation. You know? And, and like I told the kids, you don't have to say, hey, do you know Jesus? You know, instead it's like, hey, we've got this great thing going on down in church in the basement. We do these things on, on fifth Sundays, you know, and we're going to have soup. Wondering if you want to come, I'll bring a can of vegetables. You come with us, and we'll, we're just going to have fun. You know, we're going to have church, and then we're going to go have fun for an hour. Why don't you come with me? Be glad to have you with us. We'll stop and pick you up. Invite. And maybe don't invite into this area. Maybe it's the week we have um, church outside. Maybe it's to a concert that's up at the Orpheum that's a Christian group. Maybe, it, you know, there's so many ways we can invite folks into relationship, not only with ourselves, but with Christ. And what we have to remember is we do the inviting and we plant the seeds. But it is the Holy Spirit that does the work right? We are just the messenger. We are just the, the tender of the seed. But if they haven't received the seed, how will it grow, right? How will it grow if they haven't heard the news? Could God zap down and say, hey, yes, he could, but that's, that's, not, that's not what he does. He says, I gave you this gift to, through your music, through, through the things that you do, through the casseroles that you make, through the soup that you make, through the, you know, through the way that you give financially, through the way that your heart is warmed and causes you to go out and love people that you don't even know, that is trusting in the Spirit and the way that the Spirit works through our lives and those of others. We are a people, people that love together. We we work together, and we pray together. And there is strength in that. Strength in the discipleship and relationship that girds up our faith, that brings us to the place where we can proclaim Christ our Savior even without words and even with words. Let us pray. Lord, we praise and thank you for you have given us a space a space to feel safe together, a space to proclaim our faith together in the words and the songs that we sing. And now, Lord, we prepare ourselves to step outside these doors to places that aren't safe for our faith, that sometimes challenge our faith. But Lord, if our faith is not challenged, how do we know how strong and true it is? So be with us. Gird us up. Give us the want to, to be your people in this world, to help you transform this world in the name of your Son, to help us reflect you into a world that hurts, 
that is scared and is so often lonely, all of which can be changed through relationship, through love, and our trust in the movement of the Spirit. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen.